Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about whether it is okay to always have an attenuator, just like here in the picture, always connected uh, to uh, your picoscope, whether it's going to degrade the signal or cause some other issues. Uh, there are a few myths about uh, this and so we are going to address them in this video. Why are we using uh, the attenuator in the first place? Uh, well, uh, there is a limited voltage range that the picoscope can measure uh, if uh, the voltage is connected right to the BNC connector. Uh, and indeed, right on the box we see that it has a label plus minus 20 volt peak max. So it wouldn't measure anything above 20 volts or below minus 20 volts. It is often also assumed that voltages above 20 volts would damage uh, this particular oscilloscope, but uh, actually it's not quite so, uh, because in the specifications uh, for the uh, Picoscope 2000 series, uh, if you just scroll somewhere to the middle, you will find that the overvoltage protection is plus minus 100 volts. So even if you exceed the plus minus 20 volt range and uh, all the way to 100 volts you might get away with that though of course uh, it's not recommended and it's better to be on the safe side so the attenuator will allow us to measure voltages uh, uh, bigger than 20 volts in magnitude uh, but is there a penalty for doing that if we don't need it? Uh, we are going to find out using uh, this setup. So we are going to use a uh, arbitrary wave generator of the picoscope uh, connected to the probes through a jumper wire, uh, both channel A and channel B, but channel A is going to go uh, to the picoscope directly uh, and channel B is going to go through the 20 to 1 attenuator. So we can expect the voltages uh, on channel B to be 20 times smaller than on channel A unless we change uh, some settings. So, okay, so that's it for the setup. Now let's go to the uh, Picoscope program and see what happens. Okay, so we have started our Picoscope program. Uh, now let's uh, uh, deal with the settings. Uh, let's uh, use uh, plus minus 2 volts range on the channel A and for now also plus minus 2 volts range on channel B. We have a uh, fairly fast 20 microseconds per division time base and now let's uh, enable the signal generator where we are going to generate a square wave at 10 kilohertz and let's make it a little bit bigger to see the details better as it's a fairly fast signal I will need to use uh, a trigger that is going to give us a give us a pretty good uh, comparison between channel A and channel B uh, we see that they are roughly 20 times uh, different so the attenuator is working correctly now we want to we want to instruct picoscope to report this voltage 20 times bigger as well and for that we need to change the probe settings we are going to uh, use the 20 to 1 attenuator setting And uh, yeah, here is the result uh, we, that we have. It says, okay, we are showing plus minus two volts, and now it is. So basically the input voltage gets uh, cut down 20 times by the attenuator, but then the pico -vol picoscope is bringing it up 20 times. So we see pretty much exactly the same waveform, except for this hump, at the end of the rise or the drop time uh, of the square wave and this is 
the distortion that is introduced by the attenuator. So if you don't need to use the attenuator and this hump is going to cause trouble for your waveform analysis then uh, you don't need to use, uh, you shouldn't use the attenuator. And this uh, hump, as we can see, lasts for about uh, 14 microseconds. So this gives you an idea how fast the signals should be to care about this effect. Now I would like to point out that this is the worst case scenario because a square wave is uh, probably the hardest waveform to reproduce correctly. Uh, so if you take a look at uh, other waveforms, for example sine wave, they are pretty much almost coinciding with each other. Uh, the same thing if you try the triangle, maybe there is a little bit of a difference here. Uh, ramp up and down they would have uh, some distortion at uh, where the signal changes the uh, slope but uh, more or less if the waveform is not very doesn't have like sharp edges uh, there there's going to be a little distortion and you just can leave your uh, attenuator in and pretty much wouldn't even notice. However, if the voltage of what you are measuring is very very low, then you are going to run into trouble. So we are going to try to uh, reproduce that. Okay, so now uh, let's try the following. Uh, let's make a signal with a very low amplitude. So let's say 100 millivolts and for channel A we can uh, change the voltage range to that 100 millivolt and so we'll have it filling the whole screen. For channel B though we can only go as low as plus minus volt. So we are going to have a situation where on channel A we have this waveform covering the whole screen vertically but for channel B it's not going to be so, it's going to be only a part of the screen. So if we are trying to look at it more closely and zoom in we immediately going to see the effect of having only 8 bits in our picoscope resolution because you're going to have not a detailed waveform but the one that contains all kind of steps and that is not as precise as what you would have on channel A where you have uh, really detailed waveform So this is another uh, situation where you wouldn't want to use the attenuator if you don't have to. It's when your signal is very, very small. So to summarize, uh, there are two situations when you don't want to use an attenuator if you don't have to. One is where your signal is changing really fast and it often happens with the square waves you are going to have a distortion of around 15 microseconds and that might throw you off and another situation is if when you are measuring voltages that are uh, smaller than 1 volt in uh, amplitude so for example if you have a throttle position sensor with the signal from 0 to 5 volts changing slowly you're fine you can just leave the attenuator in 
as long as you uh, use the correct probe setting in the picoscope. Also, if you have, let's say, a frequency mass F flow sensor, uh, it has a frequency 0 to, mm, what is that, 20 kilohertz or something, it's still going to be okay. If you are measuring a CAN bus signal, where it's uh, 500 kilobit per second uh, of transmission, then it's too fast. The attenuator is going to distort it too much. You don't want to use it in this situation. Likewise, if you are looking at the analog VRS style wheel speed sensor, the signals over there are very small if you rotate the wheel slowly. So it's under one volt often and you don't want uh, to use a uh, an attenuator for this situation.